The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hey, BD-8? I need a stim. No, I need a stim. Whoa. We, we, we gotta work on that, mate. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Dave and in today's episode we're gonna build a BD-1 inspired companion robot. Sounds good? Well then, let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So most of the time, BD-1 sits on your shoulder and he's helping you out hacking boxes, open doors, shoots little mat packs in the air. There's also a display that turns from green to red when your life energy goes low. He also has a projector as an eye and he can display holograms. You can also use him as a zipline carriage. These are all kind of things that I want to integrate into the robot. I uh, have some animatronics in there, servos, except for the zipline carriage thing. I don't think I can build something like that and I don't want to test something <laughs> like that. I think at this point it's kind of obvious why I chose the Raspberry Pi 4 and some Arduinos to work together. Basically you have an HMI output for the projector. The projector also has a speaker so I get free sound output I always forget sound in my project. Another thing that I wanted to make work is a Raspberry Pi 4 that is powered by a battery. I was looking around for a framework that could make things easier to get started with robotics. I was actually more looking for something that is like a state machine, like, like a Tamagotchi, but I wasn't lucky to find this, so I started with the Johnny 5. While I was waiting for some parts, I had already plugged everything together with um, power supplies and stuff. So it was time to install the framework. To make the Johnny 5 framework work, um, you have to install Node or upgrade Node to a certain point because otherwise it just won't work. So Johnny 5 basically works like this. You have the Raspberry Pi. That one is communicating over serial port to an Arduino that does all the well, hard work. That means you have to install the Fermata Standard Plus software onto your Arduino first. And I thought, okay, I can try this with the Arduino CLI because I always wanted to try that. Well, I ran into a problem there too. You have to remove a module that's running on a Raspberry Pi that's always pinging the Arduino that's connected so you can't really push updates onto it. There are two blog posts by me on the Element 14 community that you can check out if you ran into the same problems. From there on you can work through the examples and make your robots and connections. You just have to say that pin is an input pin and then you have an event-based triggering system Every servo that I want to connect is connected right now. Turn on the Raspberry Pi and see if I can move some servos. The projector is running off of the power distribution board. Um, the Raspberry Pi still is connected to a mains plug socket thingy. Okay, this looks right. We have negative, negative, negative. The projector is running. Let's start the Raspberry Pi. Well, I have blinking lights, nothing is smoking. So far, so good. So let's see, there should be a servo. Yep, I'm just going to copy this in. Let's see if this compiles. Oh, we don't compile, <laughs> because it's Node. And hopefully this just sends commands over to the robot here. So let's see. Whoa, no, not good. One of the examples is for a nunchuck and I was trying to make that work. I don't know what's, what was happening there, I tested the Arduino by itself with the converters and everything but yeah it just didn't work so I was saying to myself it might make more sense to just make my own nunchuck. So I had a joystick module laying around enough RJ45 breakout boards so that I could make a little adapter cable and just hook it up directly to the Arduino. So here's a solenoid that's connected to an Arduino. 
I'm using a little chip called the ULN2803. Um, that's basically a Darlington transistor and it just gives me more power on the output of the Arduino. I don't even have to program the Arduino because I'm just using the blink sketch and um, take the same pin as the LED has on the boards. I was expecting to see a bit more. Right. I want to shoot something in the air so maybe this isn't the right thing for the job. I have this toy and uh, yeah I was trying to fix it but it was spring loaded uh, it just exploded on me. So why don't we try to recreate this mechanism. So essentially this would turn and pull in this thing here and that's spring loaded and at one point release very quickly. 72 hours later. With the whole concept of the shooter and uh, using springs I got so far that I had something like this and another bolt and here was another spring that I can't find anymore to demonstrate. This is way too much force to get twisted by a servo. So there was a guy that made a prop out of um, these things here. You just pull it apart and whatever and then you get a spring and that spring I thought I'd put into something like this. There's a little hole and then you can put in this little piece here. There's this little growth in here and you put in something in the hole. It doesn't fall out and here's another prototype. <laughs> Pretty nice, it's locked in here. I just have to very slightly pull the trigger and this battery shoots out about a meter which is perfect for the shooter for BD1. Enough with the with the complex designing. Use a small servo, pull on it and I'm gonna shoot my eye out. Nice. Powering the Raspberry Pi for uh, with a battery is one thing but I also have a projector in there that takes 12 volts and I was very lucky to find a module that had a 5 volt and 12 volt output at around 2 amps which was perfect for powering the Raspberry Pi 4 and the projector. I bought connectors um, that were already pre-wired and I had enough of them to connect the Raspberry Pi and the projector to the power distribution board. To not connect the Raspberry Pi to the 12 volt lines I swapped one of the cables like the other way around so it was easier to not confuse them. To get out 12 volts from the power distribution boards I had to connect it to a 4 cell battery. I used a little trick. I used two 2 cell batteries and put one in each leg and then connected it over a Y connector or serial connector that I sorted myself. What you should definitely use is one of these little things on each battery though um, because I ran 1 to 0 volts and I basically killed the battery and had to buy a new one so yeah check your voltages. For the servos I used a 6 volt UBEC module also drone parts you can get really cheap and I might want to get another one for just powering the big servo because eh, it's shaky. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Rotest program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Rotest program. These are product reviews conducted by Element 14 community members like you. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? The display is just another thing that I wanted to have really badly and I knew that I could make it happen because it's just some LEDs on a board, right? So I started to design the board and Eagle actually has an array function for LEDs that puts the LEDs in the right spot. Yeah, but then I had to rotate everything. Eh. I wasn't really thinking about how big the LED matrix has to be. I was just looking at the max dimensions of the free <laughs> Eagle version that I have. So yeah, that it turned out to be a bit small. Watching this I would call myself the worst solderer. Uh, worst.
normally I would just use the hot air gun with um, PCBs and solder paste but in this case I want to try something else because LEDs especially the NeoPixel stuff um, the LEDs can crack and uh, we I really don't want to see that so I'm using my dusty old oven again and um, I'll just try to get a better result with this Ah, I even got breadcrumbs in there. Mm. So this is the current state of the display. I tried to swap two LEDs that weren't working 100%. I think there was a red channel broken. And when I swapped them, suddenly three LEDs weren't working which then has led me to go through like a cycle of yeah that's a bit disappointing i will not swap any leds on this here so what do you do when you mess up a project and nothing works and you're frustrated right you complain on twitter and then actually some people have very helpful comments like hey did you dry your leds before soldering them the resin can contain moisture and you have to bake them because otherwise, when you use hot air to solder the LEDs, the case pops. Well, I got back to the um, second board. I found some LEDs that were stored for a while. And uh, yeah, I baked them for at least 36 hours now. The soldering was done with a low temp solder paste. So that melted very fast. I thought I had enough time to set up the camera, but it actually had molten already. And yeah, never mind. This is really, really, I promise, the first time. Oh! Oh no. It's because the LED is in sideways. I was checking it in the first. Never mind, stop complaining, we gotta fix this. Oh my god. Every color is there. Yeah, so <laughs> these are all those spare parts that I have from building the robot. Uh, there's a lot of version ones in there. The whole construction is kind of a mashup between laser cut wood parts, 3D printed things, and then also maker beams in between there. So at first I started building files that I found out from Thingiverse, but I quickly noticed that the weight itself is already very high. <laughs> I skipped the printing and started to design stuff that would be a bit thinner and overall just form follows function. So when I look at the robot now, I obviously see some things that need some work, like extend some wires, stuff like that. But I'm pretty happy that I got all the parts working that I wanted to, for it to work. Like the display is running, the shooter that shoots mad packs, the antennas work. There's not much going on in the face. 
I probably want to install one or two more servos to maybe rotate the head and go upside down, uh, up and down. So one thing that I was proud of was the M4 bolt that had a three millimeter tip. I just filed it down. I, uh, I've put the screw in, in the drill and then at one point I want to work on the projector. You probably can swap the fan and also maybe work on the optics a bit because the, the range and the size doesn't make sense for the, pro for the small projector. If you happen to know a good framework or have any inspiration otherwise for the robot, uh, why don't you go over to the Element 14 community and tell me all about it. The link is in the description. So that's it for today. I gotta recharge some batteries. See you next time or on the Element 14 community. Auf Wiedersehen.